Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah for your miracle power. Your miracle power, Lord God. Thank you for healing bodies tonight, for giving strength to the weak. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done. Because of what you have done tonight, we bless your holy name. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the anointing in this place. That we are such a privileged people that we can come and adore you. We can come and worship the living God. We can bow at your feet. We can come with our adoration and pour our blessing upon you tonight. We can minister to our God. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you. We love you. We thank you that we're not going alone, that you are with us, Hallelujah. that you are with us all the way. Thank you for what you're doing tonight. Thank you that your word's going to speak to us. Your word is going to minister to us tonight, Lord God. You're taking us into new places, into untrodden, charted territory, Lord God, where we've never been before. Yeah, you open up in new ways. You're opening up new wells, Lord God, that we can come and be refreshed with your word. We can come and be refreshed with the rain of heaven, with the dew of heaven that is falling upon us to refresh us, refreshing the weary, refreshing the tide, refreshing those, the Lord God, that need refreshing tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise your holy name. Praise your Thank name. You Did anyone have, have, have a word of encouragement that you got during our uh, worship and yeah. praise tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Word for the body. Word of encouragement. Someone's got a word impressed upon their heart to share tonight, a word of encouragement, what you're sensing the spirit is doing, or you've seen a vision. Hallelujah. I, I felt that the Lord was saying that my hand is not too short to reach out and touch you wherever you are. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, that's so Amen. true. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We believe your Amen. word. Yes. We believe your word. Thank you, Father. Thank yes. you, Lord. Amen. It was such a powerful anointing in the praise and worship. I could literally feel the current through my hands. Hallelujah. Glory. Such a powerful anointing. Amen. Amen. It was coming right here. It's coming into our house. Yeah. Hallelujah. How powerful yeah. is that? There's no distance. Yeah. Go on. Go on. I, I felt that it was, uh, we were like incense to the Lord. He was very pleased. It was, we were pouring out incense to the Lord. Mm. It's a sweet smelling fragrance when his people worship him. Hallelujah. It's beautiful, Thank Esther. Lord. Yes. Mm. Thank you. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Is. Amen. Yes. Mm. It's continued on, isn't it? Mandela seen something similar coming out of her hands. Yeah. There was a heat coming out of her hands this as well. This morning, this yes. This morning, amen. Yeah, I could feel it tonight Thank as you, well. Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. Glory. That's that's a good sign. It goes from glory to glory. Thank you, Lord. Powerful. Increasing in power. Thank you, Amen. Lord. Hallelujah. Anyone we, else send yes. something this um, yeah this tonight? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, in worship. Step forward, church. It was awesome this morning. Our people step forward. Yes. Thank you, it Lord. Was. It was the anointing was so powerful. And yes. even tonight as well, just step forward. Mm -hmm. Well, we have the power, the the powerhouse on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. So we should feel that electric current flowing through us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because the the power is on the inside of us, every one of us. Hallelujah. We're connected to the power source. Amen. Amen. This is no ordinary power. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This is dunamis. Thank you, Lord. Kratos, electrifying power. Yes, this is. Hallelujah. This is no power in any powerhouse. This is more stronger than any powerhouse yes. all put together in the world. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Yes, I just... Uh, yes, sir. Uh, go on, ma'am. We can't hear you, Beverly. Thank you. I just uh, felt uh, that when we, when we were singing that we will rise um, uh, 
above the storm. I just saw us like eagles rising above the storm, even though there was such a thick storm, we were rising above that storm. And also through the worship, I felt that there was uh, such an anointing even for healing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Just receive, church. Just lift up your hands. You want healing right now. You, just lift up your hands yeah. and just Thank receive you, right Jesus, now. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Believe his word, Jesus. church. Believe the prophets. Believe his word right now yeah. and receive that healing right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. When you look to the Lord, you come above those clouds, yeah. above those negative thoughts and words Thank and reports. You, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You come under his cloud of glory and power. Thank you, Jesus. He's dunamis makusrande, nimishandran, nimeria pran, makundrumatane, meliandane. Thank you, Lord. When God covered the children of Israel with a cloud, that is not his greater than any any umbrella or anything around the world that a man can make the cloud of his power and glory. He brought the right amount of the temperature in the wilderness to shield them, the right, right temperature that they needed. Thank you, Lord. God is bringing the right temperature that you need at this very moment over your life to bring healing, to bring restoration, to bring financial breakthroughs. That is cloud of his glory, just see that cloud just breaking forth and the rain just coming down upon your life. That dew from heaven coming down right now, in that cloud that you know that the you know that the sparks from heaven. Like, um, you know, he hovers over this son of righteousness, hovers over us with healing in his, in his, on his, um, in his wings right now. And one, one translator said, beams of light, like lightning just coming and burning out every spirit of infirmity and sickness. And those tumors melting off your body, just coming. Everything is under that cloud right now. Just come under that cloud right now and receive your healing. Receive your healing right now. Receive that restoration in every fiber, in every cell, in every organ, in every function. Right now, just say, Lord, I believe and I receive right now. The son of righteousness is hovering over with healing in his wings, mala mora, beams of his power and his glory, mala electrifying glory and power entering your body, entering your soul, entering your home. Right now that that darkness is leaving, mara mora, kanasur, borti, tiatela, ramara. Just join our faith together, church, and believe for one another. That that, that that dark cloud is leaving right now, that is glorious crowd cloud is uh, uh, hovering over you right now, hovering over your home, wherever you are right now, in your cars, wherever, in your workplaces, just believe that God is hovering over you right now. There are people listening to us right around the nations right now, wherever you are right now, or in your car, in the plane, wherever you are, just see the glory of God just coming upon you right now. Thank you, Lord, that cancer is leaving you, that spirit of infirmity is leaving you, that pain is leaving you, that grief and sorrow is leaving you right now. They must suffer, they just let it go, church. You want to cry, just cry out, let it, let it out, just unlock that well right now and let, let all that grief and pain and sorrow and trauma just coming out of you right now and let the healing power of God flowing into you right now and healing your broken heart right now. Thank you, Jesus. All the fear is gone. Dread is gone. That his glorious presence is invading your life and your heart. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, bringing hope into that hopeless situation right now because he is your living hope. Thank you, Lord. Those who put their trust and hope in him, in him alone, will never be disappointed, the Bible says. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. The kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Anyone else quickly before we take communion? Yes, please. Um, during the end of praise and worship, I um, got a, a little bit of a song that bubbled up out of me. And um, the, the, the words are, freedom reigns in this place, showers of mercy and grace, falling on, falling on every face, there is freedom. That's what I got. Thank at you. the end of the Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Just receive that church. Beautiful. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Receive Thank that word. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. A new freedom. Thank you, Lord. It's turning your mourning into dancing, turning your sorrow into joy. Thank you, Father. A new freedom. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Anyone else? Um, yeah, my at the end of worship and then right up until now, I've had my hands tingling and I've just felt that it was a um, anointing to heal. I felt that God's healing anointing. So I just wanted to confirm that. Mm. I, I believe that there was a healing anointing flowing. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's exactly what I sense too in, uh, you know, after Beverly said that and, uh, you know, that's cloud of his healing and glory. Like in yes. Malachi, the son of righteousness will hover mm. over with healing in his wings. Thank yes. you, Lord. Well, it's like when that current starts throwing, flowing through your hands, you want to lay your hands on the people because you know there's the healing that's there, that's mm. flowing. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyone need healing in your body? Just uh, just wave your hand or put your mic off and then say yes or whatever it is and you know, get Maureen or Beverly or somebody to pray for you. Yes, sir. For Anthony, Pastor. Yeah, okay, yeah. Thank Anthony, you. anybody else? Esther. Esther. Uh, Esther from Perth, Anthony. Uh, Jesse. Lee, Jesse, Jesse, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Jesse needs healing. Janet. Anyone else? For me and the girls, please. Still having coughs and sinus. And Mandela as well. Mandela. Yes, Pastor. I need a prayer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Chris, Mandela, the girls. Thank you, Lord. Rochelle and the girls. Frankie as well, please. Ma. Frankie. Frankie, thank you. Thank you. The Lord is healing me, but I'd like it to hurry up a bit more. Sharon, Sharon, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He is here. Robin. Um, good morning. Uh, Beverly, both of you can pray. Yep, no problem. Okay. All right. We will, we are going to stand and believe we are joining our faith corporate mm -hmm. prayer. We are believing that God, I believe with all my heart that God is able to heal. God is doing, doing wonders and miracles and signs. And we just thank you, Father, tonight. We thank you that you are here with us. You are a good father. You are a good shepherd. We thank you that there is no good thing that you would withhold from your children, Lord, from those that love you. And we thank you tonight that your presence is here to heal, Lord. We know that, Father, when you show up, you speak to your children. When you show up, you heal your children. And, Father, tonight I just speak your healing power, Lord, your healing virtue, Lord, throw, flowing right now, Lord, from your throne room, Lord, onto 
your children, Father, right now, Lord. Healing is the children's bread. And I thank you for their daily bread right now, Father, that as they receive their healing, be made whole and be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak the healing power of God to flow over from the top of the, your head to the soles of your feet. Right now, Lord, I speak complete perfection and healing and restoration. And I command that foul spirit of, of infirmity to leave the bodies, any disease of the bones in the name of Jesus. I command you to leave right now. Any stomach issues, I command you to leave in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I just speak even a sound mind right now, Lord, healing of emotions where they've been broken, Lord, where they've been bruised. I speak perfect healing and wholeness in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Yes, Lord. There is no distance in your spirit. I just thank you and I pray. Hallelujah. That you thank are you, Lord. With you, Father God. You are in every home, Father God. Lord, you are touching every single person. Can hardly hear you, Maury. Sorry. You are touching every single person, Lord, that needs healing. And I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Lord. There is no distance in the spirit. Lord God, you are mighty to save. You are mighty to deliver. And I thank you, Father God, for your healing power to flow through each and every person right now in the name of Jesus. I declare total healing over each and every one in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, you are all powerful. You are all powerful, Lord. I thank you and I praise you, Lord God. I thank you and I praise you, Lord. We can do nothing in and of ourselves, but Father God, it is you who does the healing. It is you who do the healing. And Father God, I just pray that every person, Father God, who needs healing would be open and that they would be receiving, Father God. They would be in a place where they can receive from you. They can receive from you, Lord, your total healing, your anointing, Father God. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank Glory. You, That's powerful. Amen. A miracle working God. Touching bodies, touching emotions, healing minds just in time. Amen. We're serving an awesome God, a prayer answering God. Amen. Mm. I just love how we can come together and we can believe. It's like that anointing in the Antioch church. Mm. Amen. Amen. God flowing through each one of us. There's no distance in prayer. It's like we're all together, that corporate anointing. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Thank Lord. You, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let those words be established in your heart and your mind. And by faith, even, even if you did not feel something happening, just by faith, you receive. You receive. Just say, God, I receive right now. I believe and I receive Amen. the prayer. Just confess it, church. Confession is important. Thank you, Lord. Confession is important. Thank you, Lord. He is the high priest of our confession. If you don't Amen. confess, he's not your high priest. Yes, yes. Just believe that. Just say, I believe and I receive, Lord, by faith. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You get up in the night and you will feel that that pain is gone, that sickness is gone, that disease is gone. Just say, God, I believe that the healing power of God has entered my life, entered Amen. my body, yes. entered those areas right now. And the healing power of God will continue to work mightily in my body. Just make it personal Jesus. that it will work mightily. If you're praying for somebody else, just believe and confess it over their bodies and mention their name and say, say that the healing power of God, that that prayer has entered my body and it will continue to work mightily in every cell, in every organ, in every function. Thank you, Father. We believe and we receive right now that by your stripes, by your wounds, Lord, by your stripes and your wounds, we have been healed. Thank you, Lord, as we come to the communion table, Lord God, Lord, as we hold this bread together, Lord, in unity, we believe, Lord, that there is healing at the table of the Lord. 
there is healing at the table of the Lord. Just This is not just a ritual church. He said, do this as often as we can in remembrance of him, in remembrance that he took you, not only your sin, your sickness, your disease, uh, your fear, your dread, your torment, your shame, your condemnation, your guilt, the negative thoughts, negative words that have been put upon you from doctors. It's all on, on Calvary today. We believe the word of the living God. Thank you, Father, that every curse is broken off your body right now. Jesus said, take this, eat. This is my body. That is, you're coming in union and in communion. His body, his flesh, those who eat, he said, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood, will have eternal life. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood, there is life. There is life in the blood of Christ. There is life in the blood of Christ, the pure blood. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the life is in the blood. Right now, life is in the blood. He came that you will have life, life in your flesh, life in your organs, life in every area of your body. People have taken communion and believed that by his wounds, you have been healed and they have been instantly healed. Believe by faith right now, as we break this bread and eat together, that by the bones of Christ, we have been healed and delivered and protected and preserved and made whole, you and your house soul, as we eat together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Your flesh is flesh indeed, Lord. And your blood is blood indeed, Lord. We believe today that there is life, there is healing, there is restoration, there is wholeness in the blood of Christ today, Lord. As we bless this cup today, Lord, we thank you for, Lord, something powerful and supernatural to take place in every cell, Lord, from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet, Lord, mm -hmm. that a miracle will take place by faith. We believe, Lord, as we receive that you are our Passover lamb, Lord, that the destroyer and sickness and disease and death will leave our home, Lord. And I see the blood, I will pass over you, Ramasotini, Endele, Kamasura, Malandana, we believe that today as we drink the victory today, not only this very moment, but right through tonight, that God will give you dreams and visions of his goodness and love and mercy and healing and his cleansing power. Thank you, Jesus, that all sickness and disease will leave your life, leave your family and leave your home. Every evil and poverty and lack and every negative thing that I've been spoken over your life, even from the day you were conceived in your mother's womb, that that curse will be broken today and you will have life. You will have life and have it more abundantly in Jesus' name as we drink together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are the life Amen. giver, Lord, Hallelujah. the giver of life, Lord. We receive today, Father, that you are available. Mm -hmm. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever, Lord, that everyone, Lord, Lord, everyone, Lord, will be healed today, Lord. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Everyone at the sound of my voice, Lord, they have been healed in Jesus' name. We decree and declare it over their lives, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Is Lee there? Or? Huh? Oh, there she is. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. Father God, I just thank you for Lee, a beautiful woman of God, a beautiful woman of the word. And I get that scripture, Lee, in Corinthians where it says, 
As we behold him, we are changed. We go from glory to glory. And I just see, Lee, because you're such a woman of the word, I just see you starting beholding the word of God in a greater way. And as you beholding him, you're going to be changed. I just see an inward change and I see areas changing in your life where there's been a battle and a struggle and a frustration. God is going to begin to move on those areas in your life that have greatly concerned you. And he's going to perfect areas that have been concerning you. And I see new liberty and a new freedom and you're going to run. You're going to run with joy. You're going to run with such freedom because God is going to deliver you and set you free. Hallelujah. He's doing something new and something awesome. And Paul and Rhonda, uh, when I brought that word this morning about that Caleb anointing, I just see that uh, you ones that are, are going up up and up, going up further, hand in hand. And it's like the Caleb anointing. Let us go up at once. We are well able. We can certainly do it. And I just see that you both are going to break through strongholds, going to break through where, they, where the giants have stood in the way. And it's like the giants have stood there and it's been an opposition. It's been uh, a, a situation where you haven't been able to break through. And I just see together because one will put a thousand a flight, two will put 10,000 yes. a flight. And I just see you breaking strongholds with the sword of the spirit, cutting loose the, the Goliaths that are stood in, in front of you. And you're able to go into the, that promised land, into that land that God has paid for you and, and receive your inheritance. I just see blessing, blessing of God. And as you're both together, I see both together, there's a powerful anointing. As you come together, there's a powerful anointing that's breaking the strongholds. And I see such a power and a fire and a tenacity on the inside of you. And there's such a fall, forbearance, forbearing spirit, a forerunner anointing on the inside of you. And you're breaking through, you're breaking through those wall cities, those fortified mm -hmm. cities. Oh, you're breaking yeah. through that and you're coming into your new day. This is a new day. A new day has dawned for you both. Hallelujah. You're very precious in the eyes of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And Kathy Harrison, I just see that the Lord's clearing everything around about you. He's just clearing everything around about you. And it's like, wow, I can see clearly now the rain has gone and all the obstacles out of my way. Just see the Lord clearing everything and you're going to have such clarity, such clarity God is bringing uh, across your pathway. And it's like you're going to be able to see so clear and you're going to know exactly what to do. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Estelle, to see the Lord just dancing with you, the lover of your soul, he's your husband. I just see the Lord just pouring out his love and abundance upon you and he's just embracing you with his arms of love. He's just, his wraparound presence is right there with you and God is reassuring you. And I think about the song that we've sang so often, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. And I just see like fear, different areas, fear has been grabbing you. Fear has been latching onto you, but I just see a, a greater revelation that you're coming into and you're going to have a greater revelation that's going to release you and set you free from all the fear, all the insecurity, but you're going to know that because Jesus lives, you can face tomorrow. You can face all the things and you can do all the things that you need to do because Jesus is with you. Hallelujah. Because he's the same today, yesterday and forever. He changes not. Your assurance is in the living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Your reassurance. I just see God pouring out blessing upon you, pouring out his blessing upon you. And there's some surprises coming your way. Some things that you have no idea about, but there's some surprises God has arranged to come your way, to come to you. Because you've poured your love, you've poured your blessing upon others. Hallelujah. God sees your faithfulness. You've been laboring in that field. You've been faithful, faithful. It's like uh, bringing in the sheaves. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. And all the seeds that you've been sowing out there, sowing out there. And sometimes you come home and your body's tired, your body's weary, because this one wants more prayer. This one wants you to come here and there and you become weary. And God's saying that your labor is not in vain. Your labor is not in vain. I just see the Lord giving you rest from your enemies, just lifting you up and bring you into that place of peace, into that 
place of, of having that tranquil uh, peace from God. You're just going to know a new peace. And it's like Psalm 23. He leads you beside the still waters and he restores your soul because you are precious to him. You are so precious to him. You are loved, highly favored and greatly blessed. You are so precious. And Shannon, I just see that the Lord's got you by the hand and he's leading you up higher. Just see that limitations are breaking off of your life. And just like uh, JB's prayer, Shannon, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. And I just see inside of you is, is, is so much. There is so much in your storehouse on the inside of you. And God is getting ready to break open. That's the seal that has been around there. There's been a seal around the giftings and the calling of your life. And I just see the spirit of God is getting ready to break that open. And, and the gifting and calling is going to come out of you. And you're going to think, wow, that's amazing. I didn't know I had so much stored up in there, but it's in there. It's to bless the body of Christ. And I just see uh, you are a son of destiny. You're a son of destiny. You are loved and God has been positioning you. And I just see a uh, uh, refocusing a refocusing of your life upon the things of God, upon the things of the spirit. I see a man of the spirit emerging out of the back burners, out of the back sabbaticals, a man of the spirit, and you're going to open up your mouth. I see power and authority coming out, power and authority. That's going to shut the lion's mouth. Hallelujah. I just see strongholds breaking. I see that spirit of intimidation breaking off of your life. And a young man of destiny is emerging, a young man of faith, a young man that is willing to step and, and break through into new ground and new ground you shall break into. And I just see you going off and just roaring like the lion. And you're thinking, wow, I didn't know I had even that inside of me. And God is going to show you that there's something powerful on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Thank you, Pastor Ainsley and Yara. I was talking to somebody today, someone that doesn't come to our church, um, and they were telling me that uh, their husband has just received a 120% bonus. We have been praying for them. Yes. And I said, that's uncommon favour. That is uncommon favour. And so I want to pray for every person tonight for uncommon favour. Hallelujah. Father God, I just lift up every person, every person that is tuned in tonight. I pray for uncommon favor in every area of their life, Father God. It's time, Lord God, that they see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It's time to see uncommon favor, Father God, Hallelujah. favor in their workplace, uncommon favor, Father God. Lord, it's time for them to see because the time to show favor to Zion has come. The appointed time has come for uncommon favor, Lord God, oh, for unprecedented favor. Yeah. Holy Ghost, release your power, your fire, your anointing, your blessing. Oh, that you would render the heavens and come down. Pour out your blessing, uncommon favor, uncommon favor, Father God. I thank you, Lord God. Lord, when the blessings are being, Lord God, stashed up, stored up, I thank you for the release of the blessing, for the recovery of stolen finances for every person, Father God. Lord, that you'll pour it out, pour it out, pour it out to them in abundance, Lord God. I thank you that healing would come speedily into their bodies. Healing and restoration speedily. I command everything that's being delayed right now to become activated. Activated. I break that delay right now in the name of Jesus over people's lives. I break that delay. No longer delay. But I thank you, Lord God, for an acceleration of your blessing upon every life, of your healing power, of your restoration, of deliverance, Lord God, of breakthrough, 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 of victory of miracles. I declare it over every person tonight in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Uncommon favor, favor to rest richly upon every house, upon every house. Hallelujah. I thank you that the blessing of the Lord is upon the house of the righteous, upon the house of the righteous. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. I 
I dreamt I won a lot of money <laughs> this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. While well, they're talking about uncommon favor, don't forget about um, tithing to the church and giving your offerings to the church as well, tithes and offerings. Um, as I said this morning, just get the get on our website on the on the home page on the right hand side top giving just click that button get the account number and um, stick it on your fridge and stick your account number on the top of next to that and stick Malachi 3 that God will pour out a blessing upon your household and this person that Ella was talking about before that they got 120 120 percent or 100 120 mm. percent is that right 120 percent increase bonus bonus yeah um yeah they they do tithe regularly as well you know so god honors when you obey god's word it's a good mm. thing to give to the lord wherever god has told you to give it you just pour out your blessing and be committed and and yeah. submitted and god will um you, it's your heart attitude mm. to it's not on not just your giving it's like like when Jesus said to the widow who gave all that she had, I'm not asking you to give you all, all what you have, but God, Jesus made a statement. She said that she gave out of her, out of what she had, but the other gave, other gave out of their abundance. But that's all she, her heart way of giving is, is it's like worship. If you come murmuring and complaining, oh, I better worship the Lord today. You know, God says, go away with that worship. You got to be just thankful to God that you're breathing today and you love the Lord and all what he done on Calvary for you and lift up your hands and pour out your worship unto him, your sweet worship unto him. God wants a cheerful giver. That's why he said, he put that word cheerful giver uh, and God will bless you. Church. There is no, no stopping of him blessing mm. you. Mm -hmm. uh, because you love God, you're giving, not because you're forced to give it. I mean, Mm. And God has really blessed the Ara and me because we never stopped giving. You know, if there was a need, we gave. When we did not have, we gave. And um, today, there was a, a you know the cute cute angel in our in our house opened the door, and there was an envelope at the door um, for the man of valor to um, take the cute angel, uh, the cute angel, and give her a feed. So we we were blessed today. <laughs> So I'm taking this 70-year-old quick, cute angel. <laughs> you know whom I'm talking about. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. They come knocking at the door, church. Amen. You don't have to wait for the postman to come. God will open. I mean, there are so many testimonies of people that have gone to the bank. There was a... Uh, a lady, she was in a, in a meeting uh, in, in another state mm. and, uh, and this man of God gave her a word that God was going to pay off her mortgage. Uh, this, uh, I think it was about 300 kilometers away or, you know, wherever it says, uh, miles and miles away anyway. And uh, so she went to the bank and the bank said that her loan was paid off. So she said it couldn't be. She said when it was paid off, she said on this day, she said it couldn't be because I was, um, you know, I was in this place. And uh, she, uh, so they called the guy forward and uh, uh, the guy who received the money, and he said, Ah, this you you came in here and you and you and you paid it off. Uh, she said, Ah, yeah, okay, I forgot about it. And she walked in. God had sent an angel into the church and paid her mortgage off. But she got the word about 300 kilometers away from a prophet. Mm -hmm. You know, and there are people who have got suitcases of money. God, God knows how to transfer the money onto you. I mean, you don't have to wait. It's your obedience, your faithfulness, and your uh, gratefulness is, uh, and giving it out of a good heart, not a complaining or murmuring and finding fault and just get all the complaining and murmuring out, you know. And if you ever have to say that, God, where is my turn coming? And uh, God, I'm been giving and giving and it's not coming. God knows 10 years later, you will say that. So you're not going to be, because your attitude towards God, God knows that it's inside. So eventually it comes out. Don't give up on a blink of a miracle. Just, just get into worship and praise and learn how to do it. 
Paul, Paul and Silas, they, in their miserable time, they worship God. In a dark, stinking prison, they worship God because they used to worship God in the hard times. And God rocked that place and brought revival in the prison cells and shackles were broken, chains were broken and prison doors were open. They had all the reasons to comply. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Be blessed and uh, don't forget the transformation meetings. As, as you know, things are happening. Try and try and make it even for 10 minutes, church, try and, try and make it for the tr transformation minutes. People are on their way to work. We have 40, 50 people sometimes logged on in the morning and, um, yeah, and praying together. It's, I do believe that it's like the Antioch church. There are great things happening. Even, even this, you know, I, I got up with dreams and even this morning, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, I think it was in the early hours of the morning. And uh, according to my mom, she said that I was born, uh, you know, uh, in the early hours of the morning, I think four, four o'clock, something in the morning. And I think about that time I got up in the morning and, and these words came out of my belly that this is the day the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I really rejoice today. And this was the day I was born 73 years ago in a place called Lindula in Sri Lanka on a cold, cold morning. That part of Sri Lanka is up in the mountains. The TSH is a cold place. And I felt the cold in the morning. And probably God did something 73 years later. I do not know. But it was one of the best birthdays I ever had, you know. And, I would say it's the best birthday, all I was crying all day, but God probably was doing healing and deliverance or whatever it is were happening in my life. But you guys really touched my heart, as I said before. I was, it was just, just outstanding, outstanding. Uh, the words and the songs and everything that was said this morning, they are a real blessing to you and me, all of you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Continue to pray, pray and come together, church. I believe that this is like the Antioch church because you could see in such difficult, miserable times around the world, we are thriving and going from one level of glory to another spiritually. Our church has been growing and the people have been growing and we can see daily the tremendous growth in the people in this church. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The testimonies are outstanding what God is yes. doing. Uh, bless you all. Okay, Norm has got something for us today. Oh, good. Are you ready, Norm? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, I need prayer. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for your presence. I ask that you speak to all of us, that you want us to connect with you like never before. Help me. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> um. I, I'm going to, um, wasn't exactly what I was planning, but I need to go this route. I was going to continue on a little bit more with the discipleship stuff, because I think that this could be quite helpful to everyone, because um, we're meant to be disciples and we're going to learn how do I really make uh, myself a dwelling place for God. Um, before I get started, I'm just going to Put a few little rules. I'm gonna. I do want interactivity. I find talking on Zoom um, difficult, and um, I'm gonna ask some questions. So if you could turn your videos on and talk backwards and forwards, would be good. So I don't mind questions. I want this to be something that you're gonna really think about because I'm gonna go through asking you some questions. If I bring up stuff that you're not quite familiar with, there's a uh, all the teaching we've done at the men's meeting. Go through that and you'll um, get a good feeling for it. So uh, I'll get started. I got. I, I need to find out from some, some someone here. Does anybody have a food that they really dislike? Something that is not prohibited and, you know, your doctor hasn't said you can't eat, but I need one person to volunteer to tell me, is there something that you don't like to eat? For me, it's Emma. What do you, what do you dislike? Um, onion. Onions. Okay, we'll pick on you if that's all right. Okay, okay. So I'm going to um, propose a bet. There's three bets. And what you need to do, and everybody should be able to participate in this, 
all of you should be able to think of it. What food? What is it something I really dislike? You can't be allergic. I'm not talking about stuff. You're not allergic to onions, are you? Emma? No? Oh, good. No. So you, you just allergic. really don't like onions. Like, if it's in a salad, you'll move it to the side? You loathe them. Good. I loathe tomatoes. I can't stand them. To me, that they make my... <laughs> it's like... I'm sure if I wrote the Bible, the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden would have been a tomato. Tomato. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, yours would be an onion, I guess. You could see an onion growing from the tree. But mm -hmm. okay. So let's go. This is how the bat goes. Sorry? You said it's funny because my onion is an onion. They're all a bit of an onion. Sorry. Just a bit just... Okay, let's go with the bet. Now, everybody's, I go through three of them. So the bet goes like this. You're going to have to love onions or whatever food you guys are thinking about. I'm going to part, I'm going to, basically what the bet is, is that if you're going to love the onions, I'm going to give you a million dollars. But if you fail the test, you've got to give me a million dollars. So that that's, um, don't panic too much. So I'm going to uh, ask you a whole bunch of questions and I'm going to see whether you, you've got a really, it's not just saying I love onions with my, my, my or tomatoes with your mouth. It's like you've got a really, and I, you know, we'll do a polygraph test and all these questions and just see how you go. So that's the first bet. You don't have to give away. Don't tell them that. <laughs> this is a hypothetical. I'm not giving away a million dollars. But it's important that it's important for this scenario that you get this, that there's a really big incentive here that you're going to change how your emotions feel about onions for a million dollars. So that's the first bet. So bet number two is that um, you don't have to change your feelings about onions or tomatoes or whatever the thing that you don't like is. But for for the next year, for 365 days, you've got to eat a tiny little bit of onion every day. And if you can do that for 365 days of the year, I'm going to give you a million dollars. But if you fail on day 364, if you cave in, you just can't do it, you give me a million dollars. So that's bet number two. It doesn't involve liking onions or tomatoes or anything like that. It's just changing your emotions <laughs> or not it's got nothing to do with your emotions you just got to eat it so it's bet number two so bet number three it's going to be a, very similar to, to the first one we're going to have a lie detector test and all that um during the year you don't have to eat any onions or any tomatoes or whatever you don't like but you've got to change how you feel about onions and at the end of the year, we're going to do a light detector test and everything and do these questions and see if you can love onions. So there's a, does everyone get the three bets? Really important you get this. So again, a huge motivation here. You get a million dollars. So here's the questions. Which one of these three would you choose to get the million dollars? Which one do you think is the easiest? The best for you, the worst for me? Little Anybody can answer. Have a little bit every day. So that's number two. Yes. Anybody else want to try anything else? One. Number one, you'd fail straight away, wouldn't you? So you can just instantly love onions, just like that. Dollars, a million dollars. For a million dollars. Again, there's a lie detector test to see. You can't just say, oh, I love onions. It's like you've got to really deep in your heart love onions. Are you sure about that? <laughs> I'm going to get rich here. <laughs> number two or number three? <laughs> Maybe number, number two. Three. 
So most people will go number two. Why would we pick number two? Anyone can answer. What's the numbers, Norm? So number one, you have to instantly love the thing that you hate emotionally and go through a test. And eat a whole onion. Eat a, eat a whole onion and absolutely love it even though you just told me you detest it. So number two is that you don't have to like it. You just got to eat a tiny little bit of it every day for 365 days. If you get through, you get a million dollars. And number three, so number two is no emotions. You just have to do it. And number three, you don't have to eat anything, but you've got to change how you feel about the thing that you hate in one year. Which would you take? Most people, I, number two? I'd I think take number two. two. Yeah. Number two. Yeah. yeah. Number two. Why? Number two. No emotions. emotions. Just a so, decision that I'm going to take it. Yep, yeah, exactly. Yes. So yes. would everyone the agree smallest, that... The smallest bit. <laughs> <laughs> so you do, you do number, number two. Yeah, okay. Most of us would. Because changing how we feel about something is very, very difficult, isn't it? But as we've been learning through the discipleship, emotions are like the fuel that help us carry out the action. So if we don't feel so excited about um, worshiping God or giving tithes to the church or um, serving other people, like our emotions are not quite in it, how is it going to help us serve God? It's hard, isn't it? So where I'm coming from is that the last lesson that we looked at, and this all progresses through, is that the main lesson is the brain rules the heart. What that means is that my my wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, my intellect, can change how my heart works. Now, number three is actually possible. You can actually change how you feel, but it takes a lot more than just intellectual assent and thought and and probably maybe on Tuesday night we'll get into more about how do I actually do number three so that I can change how I feel on my inside so a lot of what we've talked about is that there's three types of people in the world there's a sadiq which is a perfectly righteous person a perfectly righteous person their outsides like their behaviors and their action will actually match their insides. So it's like every part of them just wants to love God. They're emotionally in love with God. They're emotionally just holiness. They don't have any negative thoughts. They don't have problems with, I feel like I want to tell that person off or talk about that person. It's just everything they think is holy. And then we have a Russia, which is an evil person. An evil, a wicked person is basically anyone that's not surrendered to God. <laughs> um, they are not in control. Uh, their emotions in control of everything. And then we have an in-between person, which the rabbis call a bainanin, which is supposedly like us. A bainanin is somebody that serves God. They surrender to God in everything that they do. Now, um, the emotional part is very, very important. But so what I'm doing is I'm laying down um, tools for you to to, to see how well, this, this is how my soul function. This is how I can connect to God and grow as a believer. And I'm just going to get through two steps tonight and hopefully it'll make you think. So it's like we can, the brain rules the heart thing saying that even if I don't feel like doing the right thing, I can choose to do the right thing. Um, <laughs> it, it's like a person that can't do the right thing needs to go to the doctor because it's like, you, yeah, you can um, choose to just listen to the last lesson. I think we get through that. But i just go through this. So number two is the best action is the best for you because you do not need to change your emotions. Number three is in between. It's harder than number two. There is no action, but you have to change your emotion. Very hard thing to do. Um... 
even with a million dollars, I think every one of us would fail number one straight away. So what's, even if the motivation, it's like, well, what about the motivation of serving God? Is going to heaven enough motivation to, to motivate us to do the right thing? I, I don't believe it is. E even it's like, um, our emotions have to change, but they're very hard and they do take some time. Um, so a being in an in-between person is like this. You might be attracted to that, which is wrong, but you choose still not to do it. That's, that's really important. So it's like, you might be tempted, but you don't have to do the action. Uh, let me go. So I will go more into the emotions another time. So the big thing about a believer is that the true you is the godly self. You have two natures inside of you. You have the godly and then you have the animal we call it, or the human soul. The human soul is just only cares about self-preservation. It's not wicked. It just cares about me. Now, um, you've got to separate how you feel and look at that as something, it's not really the true you. Now, yeah, we'll get into that. Um, so feelings are not facts, or as a famous podcast person would say, facts do not care about your feelings. So everybody understand that? You can't change your emotions that easily, but you can still act so the the second part of this it's like everybody can see okay it, it, it can be hard but discipleship is about it is hard work it's not easy a lot of christians seem to come into i pray the prayer i'm going to heaven now i'm just focus on focusing my walk on making it as easy without any pain or sweat as possible <laughs> now to get on the second part, I want to explain um, another concept. So everybody's heard of the worship. Worship is a very important part of being a believer. So in Hebrew, the, the Hebrew word for worship is avodah. And it actually means service. It it's, means the effort that goes into serving God. It might be difficult to choose to do it God's way. It might be difficult to spend time studying his word, spending time in his presence, tending the prayer meetings in the morning, um, fasting and doing things like, but this is called service. Um, true worship is actually the effort and what the rabbis teach is the effort that goes into serving God, not so much the end result. In Christianity, we're focused on so much the end result. We don't look at the journey to get there. So the rabbis teach that there are two types of Bainanin or average Christians, you could say. There's one that serves and one who doesn't serve. Now, I'll explain it a little bit deeper. Some of us can serve God with not much effort at all. Some of us struggle to put on a happy face and be joyful. Some of us struggle with um, a lot of things that others don't struggle. Now, what they teach, the true service of God is some, the person that puts the most effort in is the one that's serving God the most. So a, a believer that might not struggle at all, that finds it easy to be holy and do all this stuff, is actually not serving God much at all because they're not putting the effort in. But a believer that does struggle to serve God, it does struggle with their emotions, do struggle with how they feel, but then chooses to serve God anyway, they're the one that's actually truly working, walking in worship with God. Does that make sense? I'm going to give you an example in a sec. So, 
So a slave in Hebrew is called an evid, which is where we get avodah, but an evid, it's a noun. It's the same as the title of a king. It's something that, it's a noun, it's who you are. A sadiq, a righteous person, is, it's like they're an avid. They don't struggle with the things that we struggle with. Um, one who is serving God is an oved. It's a verb. You serve God, even even if it's, though it's not who you are, it's what you do. It's what's pleasing to God because it's like, <laughs> you know, it's hard to get up and pray. It's hard to spend time in the Word. But this is the service that God wants. This is the worship that's pleasing to Him. Um, I'll give you an example. We don't have anybody called Ted in the church, do we? No, good. I'll use Ted as an example. So there's a brother called Ted in the church. And he's an ill-tempered and angry person by his normal nature. You think to yourself, I'm glad I'm so patient and kind, unlike Ted over there. He's always crabby and rude, and he has a nasty expression on his face. See, I mean... A lot of us probably compare ourselves to other people and go, oh, you know, I can't believe they struggle. You know, I don't struggle in that area. See, our, our judgment is actually not fair. If you were Ted, then you'd be wired just like Ted. You'd have the same brain chemistry. You'd be grow up in the same circumstances that produced who Ted is. So maybe Ted has a natural God-given personality to be grumpy, unlike you. See, what you don't realize is that because he is ill-natured and you are good-natured, he has to work much harder than you do at being good. For you, to, it's natural to be nice. For Ted, to be nice, a little nice, is a lot of work and harder for him to be kind. Others love you and congratulate you for you being such a warm and nice person. But it's actually Ted who makes the effort. You know, when what the father sees him do in secret will reward him for the effort. But for you that doesn't have to put any effort, there is no reward for you in being nice. That's very good, no? Can you see the example? In the day of reward and judgment, it'll turn out that Ted is way ahead of you in the reward because he had to work harder than you. It wasn't so much about the end result. It was about his service his effort that he put in can you see can you see how that works this is an important concept it's not about being perfect it's about the effort to serve god wake up computer it's not about the results but it's about the service see if you're not if as a believer, we've got to be very careful. It's like, this is what I'm saying. It's like, you might be outwardly doing the right thing, but your emotions inside might not be right. Now, the, the effort at going before God, spending time in his word and in his presence, spending time in the prayer meeting, spending time in discipleship and things like that, is the effort that you put in because it's like the goal is I can I want to become a dwelling place for God. I want to become his sanctuary. His sanctuary needs to be prepared. So the effort that you put in into bringing about that is what God's looking for. Um, if you're not struggling, then maybe you're not, you need to push yourself harder. Um I'll give you some other examples, and this will come, when I share these examples, you might have actually heard some other famous rabbi that we all follow saying similar things. His name was Yeshua, Jesus. Now, there's a, a, this is a 2,000-year-old saying statement. One who serves God is one who reviews his lesson 101 times. Now, what, what does that mean? Back in Jesus' day, when you heard a sermon, when you heard a, a teaching, 
you would recite and go over that teaching at least 100 times to, to learn it. Today, if we go through a book or a lesson more than once, maybe twice, we think, oh, we've put a huge effort in. But in those days, they would go through the lesson 100 times. But they actually taught that if you went through a lesson 100 times, you weren't actually learning. It's when you did it 101 times that you're actually learning. Now, what they, they teach is that the one that does it 100 times, it's like, okay, just say this is the reward from doing it. But the one extra time going one above what the, the normal is, is actually equal to all the effort of the first 100. I'll show you another example. Again, this is a 2000 year old example. This is what the rabbis teach their disciples. So back in the day, they used to have donkey drivers that you would hire. It's like today we call them Uber drivers. The donkey driver would pick you up and he would take you for, uh, they'd hire themselves at the rate of 10 parsangs for a Zoom. So I'll put it in modern. So just say for $10, I could travel from where I am in Brisbane to the other side of Brisbane for 10 bucks. So that's it. Now, if you went one kilometer outside of Brisbane, they would charge you 20 bucks. Actually, if you went one, one meter outside, so you get 10, they're charging you $10 to travel to say 10 kilometers. But if you go 11 kilometers, they're going to charge you 20 bucks. The rate doubles. So what they're teaching is that the extra mile, the extra effort is actually equal in reward to the normal effort. It's, it's like it doubles. Does that make sense? Mm. Does anyone remember Jesus saying, if somebody asks you to take a load one mile, go the extra mile, go the second mile, because that's worship that's service to god it, it's like just say um oh, okay here's another example um tithing uh i know we don't talk about it very much in the church but tithing is 10 percent, and for some of us giving 10 percent of our income is actually it's there's no effort in that but true worship is when you go beyond what's expected or i'll give you another example and again i'm referring to a parable of jesus remember when jesus was, was like you know that there's like the, the rich guy would come and he pour all the coins into the um the uh temple coffers and they go oh look at how much money he's giving and then a, a widow came along and gave just like one cent and put it in and jesus like recognized her and said she's given more it's like because the effort that she had to go through in giving was worth way much more than what he did. It's a little bit like just say, um, I'm trying to think of somebody famous. Um, <laughs> just as someone famous came along to the Lord of the Breakthrough, and I mean he, he's worth probably you know twenty million dollars. Just say he decided to give a hundred thousand dollars to the Lord of the Breakthrough Church. All of us would be so excited to go look at him. Isn't he amazing? But for him, maybe that's not very much effort. But somebody else in the church struggling to give $5 gives their offering. According to God's system, their worship, their effort is actually worth way more than what he did. Do you see how that works? For what I'm saying as a disciple, you're called to go the extra mile. King David, he said, I will not give that which does not cost me to the Lord. It's like God wants us not just to be comfortable Christians, but he wants to go the extra mile, the one extra to go where it's uncomfortable so that, I mean, that's true worship. Is that kind of, everybody get that? I mean, I don't know. <clears throat> See, a lot of us, you know, some of us, um, I guess I'm not talking about myself, we don't struggle doing the right thing. I mean, we don't do the wrong thing. We serve God easily. Um, 
according to what they're saying, a, a, a disciple needs to push himself into the place where it's like, okay, where in my Christianity does God really want to challenge my heart? Where can I really push in and go? Maybe my I, I maybe there's areas in my emotions that I don't want to go that God wants to, to start working on and going, okay, I want to deal with this area or something that where, yeah, <laughs> I instantly thought of one which I don't want to talk about, but um, like, maybe you struggle with fasting <laughs> you don't like fasting because it's like it's too hard on my flesh but god's wanting you to step out and actually push in further because it's like there's a reward there let's not go there um so does that make sense so the second part is it's not so much about being perfect or the end result it's about the service, the effort that goes into serving God. You will not, it's it's not about perfection. It's about the service that we give to God. Changing your emotions is a long-term project and you're not guaranteed perfection. I've been trying to change my emotions without much success <laughs> for a long time. Now getting in, uh, I probably Tuesday night we'll get into changing your emotions a bit but it's to do a lot of to do with meditation and um like meditating on god's love and awe and all that sort of stuff but we need to our insides as a becoming sadiqs do need to change to match our outsides god expects us to behave and behavior again and remember it's in our speech what we say it's our actions and it's what we think on it's not what's in it comes into our head but it's what we think on is important uh yeah that's all i had does that anyone have any questions does that can you does that help i yeah, mean that's that's fantastic norm that was really really good norm your teaching is profound i listen to profound men of god <laughs> i i've for years, that was really good, Norm. Thank you. Oh, I just been for years wanting to understand how does discipleship work, and I've been listening to the ones that teach it, and this is what I'm teaching you guys. It's helped no. me a lot. <clears throat> you know about those tomatoes and um, <laughs> I mean, uh, the three different steps. You know, like the, that's what I see it as three different steps. You've got to make this first step anyway to love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And, and then the, the next one is which everyone chose, number two. Um, it gradually changed. I'm a coin. Is somebody else's mic on or something? Um, yeah, when you take it little by little, you know, in, into, your, into your life. Um, so that is like, you know, like you were saying, you know, praying, worshiping God, you know, giving or whatever it is, just uh, little by little you can change. Um, it's, uh, you know, I tell people that, you know, find a time every day in the morning, like I've said this before, um, if you don't try to do it for one and a half hours, just try with 10 minutes, but have a place and a time that give God the morning when it's fresh, not when you're all worn out. So try with just 10 minutes and every month you can increase it by a minute. Um, because I remember when he first started the prayer meeting, uh, you know, instead of uh, we were there at six o'clock and most of you have heard this before, you know, and uh, one day we went a little bit late to the prayer meeting and Yala had a vision of the Lord sitting down and, and waiting for us, uh, you know, when we, when we came in there. So uh, it's good that you have your time. So it's, it's a process. And, and even, okay, you said uh, the third one is to use your, uh, to change without eating a little bit of that tomato every day. That's an easier way of doing it. But the third one is to change your emotions. And what came to me is the third step is faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You can even change your emotions. So God has given you all three of them, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The first step, of course, it's hard to change back. No one can do that. Because uh, according to the Bible, you cannot do it. Otherwise, you don't need to read the epistles. 
to go from one level of glory to another, transform this. But that's your first step. You want to change. The second step is, is the same thing as faith comes by hearing and hearing, eating little by little. And you will love that tomato. You will love Jesus. Amen. And you will do anything for Jesus. It's it's <laughs> oh, I think I problems. It it's it's like first you choose to do the right thing. It's like I may not like fasting or I might not like studying the word of God or getting up and going to the prayer meeting. And it's like, it, it, I remember when I, I first started this, you know how when you get first saved, they say, oh, you got to worship God. And I'm like, well, I, I don't know God. How can I worship? Which I don't, I don't have the emotions there that I, I need. But as you meditate on him, the emotions start coming over time. And then those emotions pick up and they give you the strength to go higher and higher and higher. And it's like, what I'm what they're teaching is that first you choose to do the right thing. The brain rules the heart. The yeah. second part that you need to work on, like they actually teach that if you just relied on the brain rules, the heart, like you, like I'm self-controlling myself, it's dangerous. Eventually you're going to snap. So you do need to change the emotional part inside you. Otherwise, you're going to snap. It's just not going to work. You can mentally assent to try and do the right thing all the time, but you need the emotions to change along with you. But the point of the first three things is to show you that you can't instantly change your emotions. You can change your actions but the third one is possible through meditation is you can change over time. Amen. Uh, don't get beat up because your emotions are all over the place and you may not like feel like serving God. You serve God. You push yourself where it's uncomfortable through worship. And then that part will change over time. Hmm. And I, like, I like what you mentioned about, about Ted before, you know, <laughs> uh, because there are people who say, oh, well, I can't do what Pastor Ainsley is doing because, you know, uh, but they do not know that I, I'm the same as them, you know. Well, I got to do this and I got to do that and you're, you're not doing this, you know, but I have to do this and, and all sorts of stuff. So they, uh, they've got an excuse not to be like Ted, but Ted is struggling to get there as well. You know, like you said, that was a very good illustration. There. He's worshipping more than all of us because he's having to put the most amount of effort to even come close to the level that we're at. <laughs> so that's where grace comes in, isn't it? You can't judge by what you look at either. Mm -hmm. Only God's seeing the effort that the person's putting in. So it's like you might look at the person that looks like the least in the church might actually be in God's eyes, the greatest worshiper exactly. and servant of out of them all. So we exactly. can't judge people. Exactly. Exactly. That's why I said, God, God said, I will give mercy to who I want to give mercy. And my interpretation is that mind your own business. <laughs> because God sees Ted more than anybody else. God sees his effort is much more that he has to strive because he's, born or crippled in some way and he's doing the bit he can do you know so it's just yeah love one another but you've got to come to that place but it's all, all good uh, everybody's growing and everybody's in a different level and everybody has gone through different cultures and emotions and damage as we as you know in our church anyway in every church you get the same people <laughs> they all cover it up and you know yeah but thank God, it's a good, good message. It's a lot to think about. Mm. Profound word, profound teaching. Excellent, Norm. I'm glad I didn't tell you what I don't like. <laughs> as long as it's not ice cream. No. <laughs> Everybody likes ice cream. I should add. Tomas, don't take what I said and use that. Say, well, you can now eat your tomatoes <laughs> or something else, please. You need deliverance over tomatoes. Probably. <laughs> he's, he's angry with tomatoes. Somebody shoved it down his throat or something. <laughs> My brother and I suffer from the same affliction. I remember a conversation once that Pastor Andy thought maybe something traumatic happened to both of us when we were young, like, 
maybe we both ate a rotten tomato and you got choked on tomato. <laughs> it's quite likely. As I've seen um, parents forcing things down and the children are spitting it out and they're poking it in and the children are spitting it out, they're poking it in. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything that I didn't like eating, but I I, I wasn't over fond of um, Brussels sprouts. But since we've been baking them in the oven, or slicing them up and frying them with a bit of bacon, I like them. I know they're good for you. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I like it grated on, on in salad, so you get you know, finely oh, grated. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thanks, Ansley. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's better better at having it like that. Yeah. Um, there's others. Uh, am I here at something? Oh, accidentally, but that was a really good message, Norm. It's always something really good to think about. I just take a lot away from that. Yeah. yeah. Again, it's not about the end result and being perfect. It's about the effort. That's the key thing. That's what God loves. It's the effort. You might struggle with gossiping. I'm not picking on anyone, but when you put the effort in saying, no, I'm not going to talk about people. That's what God loves. When it's like, you know, I find it very hard to, to, to keep my mouth. <laughs> he, he loves the effort that we put into it. Again, it's not about being perfect. It's like it. Yeah. We were made to have school dinners in England when I was at school. And the one thing we had every day was Swedes, S-W-E-D-E-S. -E -E and I hated that. And I used to take a paper bag and try and take, hide it into the paper bag to get rid of it. But we were always made to eat Swedes, vile things. Esther, I'll take a leaf out of your book because Brussels sprouts is exactly what I don't like. Sounds like we, a lot of us need prayer for the things that we got traumatized. I, I, I didn't like it myself, even steam, but uh, you try, try, try grating it and mixing it up with other salad. I, I can remember that I never liked the organist in one of my churches that I went to. I didn't like her at all. And... Uh, I said to the Lord, you'll have to give me your love for her because I haven't got any. And uh, I found that he did help. He gave me that love for her. He took all that, whatever it was. It was just her manner, I think, away from me. And, um, yes, he, he helps you when you ask him to help you through things like that. Yeah. And, the, and the gossiping or making judgments about other people because we don't really know what people are like, so we have to stop doing all those things. And with God's help, you ask him, tell him you don't want to do that anymore. He'll help you yeah. overcome all those difficulties. Now, that organist died recently, and I thought about how. <laughs> and she never changed at all, but I did. I remember that. <laughs> she didn't change. She was just as horrible as always, but I changed because I made an effort to love her. Yeah. I have that bad attitude towards her. So it's the same with food. You can learn to yeah. have a little bit of every every day. <laughs> I think you will be surprised to hear that when the Lord called me to India, I spent two years pleading with him that I could go to China because I didn't like curry. And the first two years I was in India, I hated curry and I was half the size I am now because I used to eat one spoon of it at a meal and I wouldn't eat any more. And I prayed and I prayed every day, Lord, please make me like curry. And after about two years one day, I was really hungry and I was thinking of curry. <laughs> and so it took four years of prayer to like curry, but now, as you know, I love curry. So it, it can change, but 
you need persistence and you need to be maybe in a place where there's nothing else to eat. So that's, that's what happened to me. You made a good curry too. Yeah. I used to stand in people's kitchens with a notebook because I didn't know how to make curry and I'd, I'd, I'd stand and write down what they did because I didn't have a clue. But thank you. Well, the guy that wrote the um, Passion Translation, he was in Peru and he said it was really hot there and the people were difficult. And every day he would have bananas and rice. And he said, Lord, I'm sick of having bananas and rice every day. <laughs> Norman, you certainly make um, us, uh, you always give us uh, well thought out um, uh, questions where we have to think it out. Now, it can change if, 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 if it's a requirement for us to get into heaven to eat what we don't like, uh, and with me, it's um, um, oysters, um, it, it changes. Because of our love for the Lord, we would uh, eat what we wouldn't uh, don't normally like just to get into heaven. But, but we also have a good uh, motivator or a motive uh, that um, hell awaits us if we don't um, uh, live for Jesus. Yeah, you got, you got the message, Leslie. It's not the tomatoes and the onions and the, and the grapes or, whatever, or the oysters. It's, uh, it's your worship, your your attitude towards others and your gossip and slander and criticism and conspiracies and everything that have been going on in the church for thousands of years. Going God, God can't make good disciples with, with uh, I know I mentioned the scripture before, you look like whitewashed tombs on the outside. So they did all the feasts, they did everything, but inside there was dead man bones and uncleanness. The true discipleship come with a clean heart and that's the mission of our church anyway. Mm. Um, oh, church, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Wesley is actually tap, tapping into kind of where we're going to head with this to give give you all a bit of a heads up. So the next sort of lesson... Somebody, we go through, somebody's news is on. Yeah, yeah go on, uh, no. So the... the oh, it's, sorry. The, um, the next lessons are actually talking about how do we change our emotions? And there's actually two ways that it happens. So not giving away too much but the first is what is meditation there's meditating on god that changes how our emotions can change because you need your emotions but the second way which is very interesting which wesley's touched on and so has pastor ainsley is there is a, actually a supernatural way of tapping into Amen. godly emotions that are actually inside you right now Amen. and there's a there's a technique and a, and a way of actually doing it but both are important. You need to meditate to change the insides. But the second way is you need to know how to tap into the supernatural one as, as well. I don't want to give too much away, but that's kind of where I'm heading. We can be caught up in ministry too. What does the profit of man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? And it's, it's the love chapter as well. I mean, you can going to feed all the poor and become a mother Teresa. There's nothing being a mother Teresa or going to India or Africa or wherever it is. But, you know, how is your heart attitude? That's what I see mainly. The true discipleship comes from the inside. What did the prophet a man? If you can't save a soul anyway. The salvation belongs to God. He saved you. You couldn't even save yourself. I mean, I couldn't save myself. I didn't know I needed saving. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Anyway, I laughing. I think you're like getting the message anyway. Yeah. What do you say now? I just reading what Maureen said. Um, sorry if um, my message about Ted. It's not saying Ted's grumpy. Generally, it's just trying to be an example. Was that Paul? 
Uh, no, that was uh, uh, Maureen. Maureen said her, her grandfather was, his name was Ted. We all got stuff that we, we carry from our parents and grandparents as well, but not everybody turns up like their grandparents. I've seen that in ministry, like their grandparents. So it, it misses sometimes even a generation and one person of the family gets affected, but the others don't. Praise God. Anyway, uh, you got something, Barry? Yeah, just a story. Uh... When I was a young fellow, I didn't like uh, didn't like baked pumpkin. And one night, um, while Mum wasn't looking, I got the pumpkin off the off the plate and hit it hit it hit it behind between me and the plate. And ju and just at the end of the meal, before Mum took the plate away, I grabbed the pumpkin and excused myself to go to the loo. And I went in there, opened up the bathroom door, and threw the pumpkin out the window. And I thought, got rid of that. But unfortunately, that the houses we lived in, they were fairly close together. So the, the lady next door, when she woke up the next morning, was walking down the side of the house and wondered how she ended up with baked, baked pumpkin stuck to the side of her house. <laughs> so I think I got a bit of a... Dad used to take his uh, belt off and hitch you around the back of the knees when you did something wrong. So I'm sure that's yeah, what happened. I, I had that one too, yes. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Not the pumpkin, but the belt. <laughs> I used to do the same thing with Brussels sprouts. I'd wait until mum wasn't there and then I'd just put it in a serviette and I'd excuse myself to go to the loo and it went down the loo. <laughs> there could Thanks, be a... Thanks, Janet. I'll, I'll do that next time. Good on you. <laughs> <laughs> there could be some deep spiritual insight that we're all getting about this maybe god wants us to start doing something that is yucky to us like we don't like eating brussels sprouts tomatoes or onions maybe there's something that he wants us to do that um maybe we're not comfortable with and um it's pushing us out of a comfort zone not to put it in the toilet so i'll bring some tomatoes to your house norm <laughs> no <laughs> I, I need ministry about that one. You get to the root of the problem. <laughs> Can I say I don't want to get to the root of the problem? Or, or is that rebellion? Uh, it all depends if you want to keep your roots. <laughs> we can make a great curry. Onions, tomatoes, Brussels sprouts would be awesome. That'd make a, a good fry. Yep, I reckon. I think, I think you guys, you guys, are, have you got the message? You're all, ca all caught up in the food. I think they're hungry. <laughs> yeah, I think we're 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 Shalom, you got something? No, it's Bill here, Pastor. Oh, Bill. Um, just wanted to share something. I suppose God showed me something quite a few years ago and um, it's kind of like what Wesley was saying and the, the spirit and also like the motivation of hell and, and um, it was something that um, pretty much all my life I've driven on the left hand side of the road and um, so a number of years ago I went to Israel and we were hiring a car we were going to drive and on Israel it's on the right hand side of the road and it's like God showed me, you know, in one moment we're translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And it was just showing me our walk should be instant. And I know there's always emotions and choices and all these things. But when I went to Israel and that first day when I drove, I chose, I got to drive on the right side of the road. There was no middle ground. There was no variation. There were the motions, it didn't matter. I had to drive on the right-hand side of the road. I cried out for wisdom or whatever. So it was something on that time. There is a part that moving from kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of life, there is a choice that we make. And I just, God showed me that time in Israel. 
that all my life I had driven on one side of the road. And then one day I changed to the other side of the road. So, so just some insight anyway. And for me, there was a motivation. I didn't want to kill anyone, didn't want to kill myself or my wife. But that day there was motivation to do what was right. So. Yeah, well, yeah, that's very really good. That's something to think about, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. 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 What do you have to say about that one, though? Uh, that's lesson, the second lesson from that. That's actually really good. Um, the motivation is very important. And um, I would like to say that hell shouldn't be actually a motivation. It's in the Jewish thought, I'm giving a lot away here. It's disconnection from God. I'm talking about fellowship, uh, communion, um, feeling him close is why we don't do the things he doesn't want us to do. And we do the things he wants us to do. It's all about connection. And if that's our motivation, it'll give us the supernatural strength to change, to feel the right emotions, to, to, to flow in his spirit. It's like, I want to be connected no matter what. And I mean, there's a lot in that and I'll leave it alone for now. Yeah, this was just one example, I suppose, you know, it's like, it's like the two on the, uh, when Jesus died, the, the thieves, you know, in, in one moment, he didn't have to live in this earth. So there's different emotions and there are a lot of stuff in Christians' lives that are buried inside. Mm. So that's one way of, uh, that Bill, Bill said it was so, so much true because the, the demonstration was there. But working on the inside of you, when the Otherwise, we don't need the, the epistles. We don't, we don't need to read the Bible. We don't need to fellowship. We don't need to take communion. So there's a lot more of work that has to be done inside. But the guy who made it to heaven on the cross, he didn't have to be praying in tongues and going to church and putting his tithes and offerings in. And, you know, today you will be in paradise with me. So every circumstance is different. Isn't it? They're different, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Um, so where, where do you want to be in milk, vegetables, or you want to eat meat, or you want to be closer to God? You know, it's a choice as well. And then you got to remain there as well. So it's just one thing to change. I mean, if if he, if man can change in one moment, you you don't need the discipleship training, isn't it? You don't need to be transformed, like Paul said. Don't be conformed to the Bible. Why do you have to say that? Don't be conformed to the pattern of this world, be transformed into the renewing of your mind. And I believe all of us need that. I, I think the New Testament supports both what, you, what you're saying. It's like you need to be disciplined and training to change the emotions. But there is also um, a concept in the, the um, like in the book of Acts and that, where someone's emotions have been changed instantaneously. It's a little bit like sometimes some people get instantly healed and other people, it takes time. Yeah. You can't really, uh, we need both. You need, yeah, there is a supernatural emotion that can come out and you can tap into it. And then there's a, yes, I have to change my insights. See, this is, this is a little bit different what I'm saying. There, there was one, one person that uh, she to ring Yara, you know, so many times a day, uh, she was on medication and there was a lot of issues there. And so many times a day she buys things, she's not sure where to go and return it and keep it and all sorts of stuff. But then there are other times that she would, uh, she would get book, book and go on a holiday and she would never ask us whether she has to go or buy a ticket or whatever it is. She'll go on the holiday, she'll enjoy a holiday and come back. But just little things, she got them by to the shop, she couldn't make that decision. But on the other hand, she makes that decision. But she had a lot of issues, you know, mentally, and she was on medication. So it's it's so much different in, in a lot of people. That's another way of, yeah, it just came to me. Maureen or Paul, you got something? Paul. 
Hello. <laughs> Just Bill, that's that's very good. Um, oh, look, I got all the light behind me, so you can't see me anyway. It doesn't matter. But Bill, just on what you're saying, I having driven to and been to America and driven on the right hand side and all that stuff. <clears throat> I know what you're saying, but it's interesting how God showed you that. The other half of that is you are actually equipped to change because when you go to a country that you drive on the right hand side, all the equipment has changed to enable you to drive on the right hand side. You don't use the same equipment. So your mind is equipped. Your mind also does a twist. It says, I'm normally sitting on that side of the car to drive on this side of the road. But when you go to the other side, it's like a natural thing to drive on that side. So as we get into the word, we are being naturally equipped to change from where we were to where God wants us to go because he equips us. So we change the seat from one side to the other, but he gives us the equipment. So it's a good analogy. Well done, you. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. I like your motivation that you didn't want to kill anyone. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's it, it's a bit like um, you're going along in life and you, you come up to a um, a fork in the road and if you go you can you've got a choice you can turn around and say uh, yeah well I'm um, I'm going to try something new or you can go the other way and you can go back on autopilot and say oh no it's a bit too hard so you come up to that point where you have to make a choice. Yeah, it's choosing to go where it's not comfortable. And, and I'm saying that the path of discipleship is not meant to be, it's not meant to be comfortable. So it's like always pushing where it's not, it's hard to study. It's hard to get up in the morning, go to the prayer meeting. It's hard. It's hard for me. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, we have to, it's a little bit like um, a lot of you could probably relate to going to a gym, which I can't. You know, if you, you find it easy to run 5K, you're not really putting any effort into it. There's no real service. But if the trainer says, no, I want you to go 6K, then you can start feeling the burn. You can feel the, you know, the muscles and all that are starting to hurt. That's what God wants us to push where it ain't comfortable. And that's true worship. Everything you would change is to please God, isn't it? Well, like they say, no pain, no gain. It's like Muhammad Ali once said that he never started counting the push-ups until it started to hurt. It was only after it started to hurt he counted it because it was only in the pain, in the growth zone, that he measured his growth. Forward to Tuesday, Norm. Yeah, that's a really good, really good message, Norm. On it, on emotions, it's something I've been really um praying about. Um, just been like, you know, I I was raised to like harden. We had to harden up. We weren't allowed to really have emotions. So it's something I've been really praying about, just allowing myself to go through it, but not being led by them. I would take medication, or not medication, but like vitamins um, to like alter because I thought it, yeah. Um, and it, like before you we talk about the gym, like I'm I'm a I'm a big gym thing, but it's not like a weight loss thing. It just hit me just then when you said that. It is how I deal with my emotions. I'm um, going to the gym. So that's like something I've been praying about. God is good. How he support us up. Thank you. It's very really interesting, isn't it? See, um, uh, you know, God is touching an area there, but he's bringing it, getting to the root of the problem. Mm. Yeah, I just just saw sorry sorry I just saw my brother um 
yeah, just with the way we were raised, like not being allowed to express our emotions. It's been a big thing why, why he can't, I get both of us can't receive our healing. That just came to me. It's it's a, it's probably a generational thing, but mm. uh, yeah, I'll talk, I'll talk to you later. Yeah, there is God never made us like that, you know. But it's a, the shift and the balance. Sometimes it's a chemical thing that uh, that is downloaded from from the family line as well. But God, Jesus' blood can change any family line. And anything that you have been brought up in, Jesus' blood can do that. It's 100% right. He can do that. But it's just, uh, you know, with prayer and and, and um, it's, yeah. See, that's the way you're, you're, you're finding comfort in that. And that's the way you're being coped to. And everybody got, got stuff in their lives that they, they cope with that. But pushing, like Norm's whole teaching today is very powerful that is, but you know, doing that extra little bit uh, to to sh make that shift, you know, eating a little bit of that onion every day, you know, like, uh, and that is the getting the word of God to cleanse you, and you know, meditating and pondering on the word of God, and God can come into that place because God made you, created you in your mother's womb, not the way you are being trained. He made you in. Uh, you know, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. He made you in the same image and likeness and that, that is your heritage. And um, so that's the war that all of us have in some area, whether it's giving or whether it's worshiping God or reading the Bible, something, you, you know where I in. And then we find things, people find alcohol or drugs or sex or, you know, idols, or boats, cars, husbands, wives, children, find out, find everything, even becoming a pastor and going into the mission field and everything to cover that void. And, and then they say they're doing it for Jesus. See, this is why you got to be very careful that, that you're not driven from your, from the way you are being brought up from your pain. You got to be not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, but that has to be a healed heart and the and the driven forces by Jesus. Is that speaking to you, Lee, or your daughter, or anybody else? Something you want to say? No, it's okay, thank you. If there's anything that you want to speak privately, just give me give me a call and we'll, we'll have a chat about it. Is, we don't have to be brought, brought up in some control or things, things that happen to our grandfathers and grandmothers. Mm. Uh, he's my daddy. God is my daddy. He's a good, good father. Uh, Jesus said, I am the way to the daddy. He's, he's a good father. Mm. He's a good daddy. He's a good father. And once we have that love of the father, he's, he'll become your daddy. That, that's true discipleship to know the Father. That's, that's one of the main things. Jesus said, I am the way to the daddy, to the Father. And when we never had a true father, our fathers, you don't blame them and don't curse them because God used them to make you. But our fathers could not give us the discipline and the love. They could not give it. There is no way they can give it because they didn't have it. This is why we need to obey them, but you know, that doesn't mean to say that you don't have emotions and feelings towards them, which are not right. But God puts love in your heart. And that's then one of the things that Norm was talking about, those three ways. God puts love in your heart to gradually start to love them. But then you're loving your father in heavenly. And then he's the one who's going to be there for the rest of your life. Our fathers and mothers are not going to live there for all the days of our lives. But you've got a father who will never leave you or forsake you. He's always by your side. The, the problem is when we say we are not damaged and we got everything right, so God can't work on it. So wherever there is problems, we're trying to save the world and do this and do that. And praise God. That's awesome, isn't it? Isn't that good? No, what God is doing.
Yes, Pastor, it's great. Thank you. You went, you went, listened, uh, the, uh, the, listened to Julie's testimony. You know, she, she, she had that, uh, that closeness with her grandmother who gave her everything that she needed. And she was so close to her grandmother, but she, you know, and there was a friction there between her mom and dad and God revealed it to her. And she was in mission. She was going out there and helping people and everything. But that wound was never being healed till a few weeks ago. Um, but God can do it. It was all hidden in there. So we can, God, God knows exactly what took place in your mother's womb and what happened to your mother and your grandfather and right up to Adam and Eve. God is pretty smart. He knows exactly what happened all over. And you can't blame your mother and father. If you blame them, then it, you can't. Even if they are wrong, it doesn't really matter. God has chosen that father and mother to create you. So you've got to continuously ask God. Sometimes it's hard. God, put love in my heart and give me the grace. And you've got to work on that, like taking a bite of that onion every day. And you will come to know the love of the Father. Once you know the love of the Father, church, everything falls into place. Your ministry, everything falls into place. You can take, you, you don't have much in your hands. You can just, you have a relationship with the father that you can take a few fish and loaves of bread and feed 5,000 people without any money in your hand. you got a bakery and a fish shop straight away. And there's 12 baskets is full up once you have this relationship and connection with the father. And God is working on all of us to bring us into that discipleship that Jesus walked in. That was Jesus' last prayer in, in John 17. Amen. Glory mm -hmm. to God. No, you want to you want pray a prayer over this? So you got anything uh, about me? Mm -hmm. You want to pray pray no? Okay, I was just thinking about food, but <laughs> Forget about the food, they've got nothing to do with food here. <laughs> Too much talk about food ain't good with Christians. Yeah, Travis well, hamburgers look good there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me not in the temptation. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for tonight. I ask right now that your Holy Spirit will minister to each and every one of us. You, you, I believe, Lord, that you're wanting to put your finger on and things that you want us to push in with you that uh, maybe strike something that's not comfortable. Maybe it's um, something that you're wanting us to do, Lord. I ask Holy Spirit, you're showing us those things, not because you want to make it hard, but because you want us free. Amen. And I ask Holy Spirit that your freedom is going to come to this church like never before. Mm. I right now ask Holy Spirit that you go deep in each and every one of us and you bring about a healing inside of us lord because you want us to experience godly emotion you want us to experience love you want us to experience joy and peace on a level that we've never ever experienced before lord mm -hmm. and we ask holy spirit that you come right now that we can experience your love your kindness your your joy your peace right now in Jesus' name inside each and every one of us. I ask Holy Spirit that you minister to us tonight as we sleep. You're going to bring up dreams and visions. You're oh, going to really show good. us things mm -hmm. in the night that we're going to be able to experience freedom, Lord, that this is a church of worship. This is a church. We are people that want to serve you, Lord. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have the supernatural ability to move forward in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Amen. Thanks, Norm. Thank you all. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Norm. Bless you. Thank you, Norm. Thank you, Norm. Thank you, Norm. Thank you, Norm. Bless you. God bless. Thank you all. Bye. Very good. Thank you, Norm.